You are back with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here with John Beeler. We talk a lot about uh, autonomous vehicles uh, in our show because we love self-driving cars. <laughs> I can't wait for them to get here. Uh, I myself have a Tesla Model 3. I don't have the full self-driving package, but I've got the auto steer. And I'm pretty excited about that because it makes my drive so much easier in the mornings. But we are just a matter of a few years away from, I think, some real autonomous self-driving cars being out on the road. But I question uh, Canada here. What about winter <laughs> <laughs> and the snow and the bad weather we get? Uh, we have a, an expert on the line. His name is Christoph Trineski. He is uh, a professor in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at the University of Waterloo. Thanks for joining us, Christoph. Thanks for being here. I wanted to bring you on the line. Uh, you were in, uh, mentioned in a really interesting uh, Wired Magazine article about inclement weather, <laughs> snow. Uh, you have actually developed, uh, I guess, uh, uh, software for autonomous vehicles. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, that's right. So uh, in about 2016, we, we got um, a vehicle that had all the actuators needed for self-driving. And uh, we embarked on building a software stack so that we could control it and demonstrate on public roads, which we did in 2018. And that vehicle was the first one to receive uh, a permit to be tested on public roads in Canada, uh, in Ontario, and to test program. So we can actually understand the challenges of building uh, an autonomous vehicle, but also to train students. And so you actually had this car out on the road and you didn't hit anyone or any small animals? No, we didn't. <laughs> Obviously, we had a safety driver. Whenever we operated, whatever we um, tested on public roads, we have a safety driver that would take over uh, you know, whenever there is an unforeseen situation. And, and generally, how were the results? Let's put it this way, um, for, for a relatively simple domain, um, which is sort of urban driving, uh, mostly two-lane, with kind of, um, you know, not, not too heavy traffic, uh, we had to take over, you know, every couple of minutes because there was something new that we haven't uh, developed yet um, in terms of whether it's the recognition or whether it's the decision-making. So actually, uh, you know, I would say this is a, a reasonable prototype that you can develop, you know, within these, you know, maybe you know, 24 months. Uh, and if you want to get to something that operates for thousands of kilometers be, uh, before so-called disengagements, well, we're talking about uh, investing hundreds of millions. And if you want to have something that matches human performance, well, no one is really there yet. And you know, if you look at the investment that went into Waymo alone, which is one of the leading systems, if not the leading system, it was more than $3 billion in 2019 alone. I guess you didn't get $3 billion. No. <laughs> not at the university. <laughs> um, let's talk about bad weather. Uh, you know, Canada... It snows a lot in many parts of uh, uh, the country. You know, what kind of challenges exist there for self-driving vehicles? There's a whole host of issues. Uh, the most prominent is uh, just the impact on the perception of basically the, uh, uh, you know, the eyes of the, of the vehicle. Uh, so let's say cameras and laser scanners get impacted by snowfall the same way. Uh, how you know you, you get obstructed vision when when you get blowing snow, for example. This also confuses then the AI in, in the car because uh, on the one hand side there's less information that, that reaches the algorithms, uh, but also the world looks differently. And AI, it's kind of brittle when when you when you give it something new that it hasn't seen, it tends to make mistakes. And it's not as good as, as a human in, in terms of generalizing to, to new situations. So that's, that's sort of one, one, one of the challenges. There's several others we can talk about. Well, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in this field, uh, but I just think looking at a snowy road, if everything is white, how does it know where to go other than just seeing what cars are out there or, or obstacles? Well, that's, that's a great question. That, that would have been my next <laughs> item on the list. So there are roughly two types of um, automated driving systems out there. Uh, one is that sort of tries to 
on the spot figure out what's you know what the what the road environment is and and just drive and so let's say tesla is in the, in that spot although tesla is technically speaking as as level 2 system meaning that the driver is still in control and it sort of does say 90 95% of the of the task depending on the environment uh but uh most pretty much all the systems that are operating in urban environments today you know whether it's waymo whether it's cruise uh, aurora or any other of those they all rely on a map and so the map is typically uh, built ahead of time it can be updated on the on the fly but essentially the map provides you with the things that you might not see right so uh, if you can localize yourself um, you know basically geolocate yourself with centimeter accuracy and you have a map that's also accurate and if that all works well you know where the lane is so that's an important part of uh, of making that decision but that alone is not enough because um let's say if if the if the road is not properly plowed you would sometimes see in winter that people just redefine the lane more like in the middle of the of the lane or or, or, or maybe in, in this parts of the road that others have already created tracks and and um, it's easier to drive as opposed to maybe you know hitting some snow drifts on the sides uh, and this is something that humans do very well um, and it's it's something that's more difficult for AI to do in a in a very uh, let's say reliable way right so to the for example determine is this snow drift something that is actually dangerous to drive over or is it is it okay to drive over and it's not just the the size of the snow drift but it's also you know is, is it icy um is it some you know is, is it the type of snow that if you if you hit it you start skidding right so there's there's a lot of decision making that has to happen and and perception you know like really recognizing what's the situation does that uh process get more complicated at night or do these sensors that are typically employed are they you know they have night vision and that type of thing or would this be much more complex at night especially with a, a snowy condition it, it depends what sensors are being used so certainly uh just cameras in invis- invisible spectrum would be impacted uh, and you would have to rely on headlights you know the same way a human would rely on headlights uh the laser scanner actually operates very very well at night so that's not a problem but if you want to for example like recognize the texture of the snow like the type of the snow classify that uh then it, it uh that might be actually impacted in, in at night right so you, you would kind of know you know how how high the drifts are but with trying to kind of make out what it is it would be more difficult Christoph, knowing what you know, because you've had your hands involved in in programming, you know, self-driving cars, are we close to having, you know, full, I think it's called level five autonomy, where the car truly can drive by itself, taking into account, you know, snow and inclement weather? Like, how far away do you think we are? I think there are still significant challenges to be to be addressed. And, you know, I guess predictions are always difficult. I'd say that within you know the next maybe ten years we will have pockets of deployments where maybe there's some possibility of of actual um, economically viable business based on self driving. Uh, I don't think we will have widespread use of it yet. Uh, you know the, the type of system where where you can completely zoom out and just go to sleep and uh, you know during your ride. Uh, I believe that this is, and particularly also in in our weather conditions, um, this is going to take quite some time. So Elon Musk is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I don't know. I mean, I, I could imagine he might he might come up with some interpretation of his predictions from uh, you know last year, summer last year, <laughs> to still uh, be able to say, well, you know, uh, this is what I meant. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Well, Christoph, I want to thank you for joining us today. That was very insightful. Thanks so much. Christoph, he's a professor in electrical and computer engineering uh, at uh, the University of Waterloo.